The dangers on our roads only seem to be getting worse. If two children in one family can get hit in a week and a half, we need to do more. A family left to suffer not once, but twice at the hands of a drunk driver, as more recklessness behind the wheel is taking more lives. What's being done to make our roads safer? And while the number of people killed in OVI crashes in Ohio has nearly doubled in the last five years, the number of OVI arrests across Ohio has actually dropped more than 30 percent between 2017 and 21. One Northeast Ohio family knows the tragedy caused by drunk driving all too well. News 5's Catherine Ross talked to a mother who hopes her son's legacy will live on. You can't talk about Ryan Tukolsky without talking about his heart. He was a, just a very gentle soul. The hearts He's around Diane Newsnack remind her of her son. What I like about it is when I rub it, I can feel his fingerprint. And everything and he represented. Just how fun he was. What a lighthearted soul he was. And just what a good guy he was. On April 29th, Ryan and his girlfriend Sarah were riding his motorcycle down State Route 82 in Aurora when troopers say a suspected drunk driver hit them from behind. They didn't see it coming, so what I like to envision is they were riding with their arms around each other and then they were in heaven. That's how I'm hoping it happened. Sarah died at Twinsburg Medical Center and Ryan a few days later in Akron General. Police say the driver involved took off but was arrested later that day. Less than two weeks later, Ryan's older brother, Andy, survived another crash. And I do believe in angels, and I believe his little brother was there because the van was smashed to the point that somehow he climbed out a window and he doesn't even remember doing it. Investigators believe the other driver who died in the collision was also under the influence. Stop and think that you're destroying a family that some people out there will never be the same again because of your actions. But where lives were destroyed, others were saved. Ryan's family said their last goodbyes just days after the crash here at Akron General, and they say they take the most comfort in what happened next. While this Mother's Day I didn't have my son, four other people had their relatives because of Ryan's organs. Ryan's liver, kidneys, and his famous heart all going to people in need. To make that selfless act of just that simple yes, um, that, you know, um, during even times of tragedy, when one life is lost, um, others can be saved. Akron General sent Ryan off with an honor walk. Phil Davis, a restaurant manager inside the hospital, met Ryan's family just an hour earlier and felt compelled to join the walk. Totally quiet, totally reverent moment, um, and it, it, it's something that I, I still feel with me. It's a moment Davis says he won't forget, and it's another way Ryan's heart keeps beating. Truly, it's helping us get by as a family. We're so proud of him. We're so proud of knowing that there's people out there that lived because of what he's done. In Akron, Catherine Ross, News 5. Wow. And LifeBank says close to 3,000 Ohioans are currently on the wait list for organ transplants. Ryan Tukolsky's fatal crash is still under investigation, but a suspect was arrested on charges including OVI, hit skip, aggravated vehicular assault, and vehicular homicide. Roads across the country got more dangerous as people hit the road again after the pandemic lockdowns. Nearly 43,000 people were killed on the roads in the U.S. last year, which is the most in 16 years. That's also up more than 10 percent from 2020 and the largest increase ever. We also drove 325 billion miles last year, which was 11 percent more than in 2020 and actually part of the reason for the increase in deaths. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration also blaming an increase in reckless driving behaviors during the pandemic. Well, we know breathalyzers are used to check the blood alcohol content of a potential drunk driver, but there is still not the same kind of widespread testing for those who could be driving under the influence of marijuana. Now, keep in mind, more and more states are legalizing recreational and medical marijuana. There are field sobriety tests, which are often subjective, and toxicology reports may show the presence of THC in your system, but they don't say whether or not you're inebriated. Very quickly after someone smokes, uh, it dissipates and disperses throughout the body. Something like 90% of the THC is out of the blood within the first hour, hour and a half. 
And when police draw blood to test for THC, it's often an hour or two after someone's been pulled over. So there's now a push to use performance-based technology to test the motor skills of someone suspected of driving under the influence. And that could be an app to test things like hand and eye coordination to figure out if someone is okay to drive. 